Hey y'all, hey! Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Nurse Boss Shift, where we encourage nurses to make the shift to owning their own businesses and side hustles. I'm so excited about today's episode. We had the pleasure of speaking with Portia Wolford, aka The Right Nurse. I often get asked by nurses, you know, what businesses they should start. And my answer is always start with what you're good at. As nurses, we really underestimate the knowledge and the power that we have. So Portia shows us how she used what she's good at and turned it into an empire. Portia is an LVN with a passion for writing and teaching, which she blended together and started writing educational material for her patients so that they can understand their home care better, which led to better outcomes and fewer trips to the hospital. She then expanded to writing blogs, articles for major nursing publications, to ghostwriting and copywriting for other small businesses, big and small businesses. Portia now shows other nurses how easy it is to use the nursing knowledge they already have and get paid by major brands to write. Tune in and see how you can use the skills you already have to also get paid, okay? So let's get into it. Hey everyone, and welcome to our first 2023 yes. <laughs> episode of the Nurse Boss Ship. It's your girl, Dr. Kiana Jones. And I'm Crystal Parker. Um, for And we have a special, special guest who is joining us for the first podcast of the year. I just really thought about that, like literally yeah. right now. <laughs> That is the first podcast of the year, and I, I, mm-hmm. it's very befitting for you because we really are truly into talking about the nurse as a collective, and I think mm-hmm. it would be great. It's good that we have you coming on just to talk a little bit about it from your perspective. So introducing Miss Portia Warford, and yay, let's give her some hand claps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, I'm excited to be here. Thank y'all for having me. I know, me. we were supposed to, yeah. what was it, December we were going to do it? Something yeah, came up. Yeah, uh-huh. December was rough. <laughs> December was rough for us all. Yeah. Like I thought I was about to be really jamming into COVID mm-hmm. hit. As you guys can hear, I'm still stuffy. I'm negative. But yeah. I'm stuffy. What about you, Chris? <laughs> yeah, and I had lost my voice for the past three, four days. So it was just coming back. So if I sound like a frog, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But we making it, we making it. So Portia, um, I'll just give a little backstory about, you know, how I got introduced to you. Um, and then I think it was before you even know I got introduced to you. Um, believe it or not, I uh, was a part of Black Nurse Entrepreneur. Um, and this was before, this is a Facebook group, you guys, for those of you who don't know. And it's not a plug, but go go ahead and join them. It's a great group. Um, but I was a part of there and I saw you were um, posting about like copywriting and write and nurse write like writing about something to do with writing in the group. And this was probably two or three years ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like she's so dope. And I hadn't even joined the elite or I hadn't doing, been doing any of that. Um, but I just really admired the fact that you were like, kind of talking about what you were doing as a nurse and your role and like just doing non-traditional things, um, Mm -hmm. which I feel like we don't get enough exposure to. Right. So before I dive into the questions, why don't you go ahead and tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm Portia Wofford. I have been a nurse since 2010. Most of my experience is um, the first three or four years I was in long-term care and transitioned to home health. And when I got into home health, that's when I kind of realized like there might be something else that I could do as a nurse because I was doing the visiting. So I had like seven patients I would see a day. Um, and I figured out that I could write. Like I've always knew how to write. And I was like, I wonder if nurses can get paid for this. And I Googled it. And that's when I found out that nurses could get paid for writing. Um, so I did home health for a little bit, ended up in quality management quality assurance, um, basically auditing charts and telling other nurses, this is what you missed. This is what we could have done better. I took a, about a year off of work and I wanted to go back to work. So I was like, I'm going to go back into long-term care because I love the nursing home. I love it. I love mm-hmm. elderly people. Um, and I went back into nursing home. I went back into a staff development and infection control role. Um, before COVID hit, <laughs> I was doing mm-hmm. infection control. 
role. And that role was essentially creating um, curriculum, developing programs, doing all the nursing education for the entire nursing department, and then also creating infection control and um, prevention policies and procedures. And then COVID hit and my role drastically changed. So we were, I was creating programs. I created the whole uh, COVID-19 infection control prevention um, program. I did all this while I was working side hustle as a nurse writer. So mm. um, 2020 COVID hit. 2019, I told myself, this is going to be my last year working full time as a nurse. Didn't know 2020, we were going to have the global pandemic. And mm. I said, okay, I'm not going to leave because they need me. But then I ended up leaving at the end of 2021. I stayed for a year. We okay. went, got through the pandemic. 2021, November 30th, 2021, I left nursing full time. I've been working my business full time ever since then. Okay. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about your, your background just in nursing. Like, you know, I know you mentioned nursing home. So is that where you started? Is that yeah, where, that's you, where I started? Um, mm-hmm. Before I became a nurse, I was not a CNA. I didn't have like any nursing or clinical experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a very traumatic event that happened to me my freshman year of college. I was in the ICU and mm-hmm. the nurses took really good care of me. And mm-hmm. like nursing was not on my radar, y'all. I was <laughs> like, I did not know anything about being a nurse, but I was like just so shocked that they could just care for me like that. You know, they mm-hmm. didn't know me. They were so kind and compassionate. And so I told myself when I get better, when I'm able to go back to school, I'm going to change my major to nursing. And that's what I did because I wanted to do for someone else what those nurses did for me. Um, Um, And luckily, my first job, I know a lot of nurses say I have, you know, they have probably getting their first job. But luckily, my provider, who's a nurse practitioner, shout out to nurse practitioners. She uh called the director of nursing at this facility and said, hey, one of my patients just graduated from nursing school and she needs a job. Can you get her a job? (laughs) I got my first nursing job like that. Uh Um, And I did like charge nursing. So like, you know, doing the med card, wound care, things like that. A friend of mine was a home health nurse Mm. and she called me and said, we have an opening for a home health nurse. And I know you really like to teach people things. I think you'd be a great home health nurse. Again, I didn't know what a home health nurse did. I didn't know anything about a home health nurse. I said no because I was like, I'm not going to anybody's house. I don't like dogs and I'm not going <laughs> to anybody's house to take care of them. But when I got into home health, I loved it because I got to mm-hmm. teach. You know, I was out there mm-hmm. on my own. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the next nurse was an hour away. So I got mm-hmm. really very confident in my nursing skills because mm-hmm. you're the only one out there and there may not be another mm-hmm. nurse for 30 miles away and you have to be confident. So I got confident in my nursing skills. I got confident in teaching and educating patients and their family, wound mm-hmm. care and specifically communicating with other members of the, the patient's healthcare team. So mm-hmm. the physicians, the therapists, the social workers, and things like that. So um, home health really, I think I say it really set my background in being able to teach and write and educate. Um, I suggest that all nurses do a year of home health because the things that you experience out there, mm-hmm. the, the disparities that your patients go through. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked in an area that was very low poverty. So a lot of my patients could not read and write past like a sixth or seventh grade level. Mm-hmm. And so here we are trying to educate them, keep them out of the hospital. And what I learned was that a lot of times they did not understand the material that I was leaving behind, the brochures mm-hmm. and the pamphlets. Mm-hmm. So I asked the patient, I said, are you not understanding what I'm teaching you? And he said, yeah, honey. When you're here, I understand what you're saying, but I'm just going to be honest with you, honey. I don't read well. Mm. And so I was like, duh. Like, I was thinking, like, this mm-hmm. is, people can't read and write well. So, they, you know, they have the health literacy, they didn't yeah. have the health literacy. So, what did I do? I just rewrote the information to where they can understand it. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, my boss noticed that my patients stay out of the hospital much longer than other nurses' patients. Wow. And she wanted to know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I thought, if I could do this for them, I wonder if I could do this for myself and get a little money on the side. Because mm-hmm. at that time, I was working a full-time home health job and a part-time nursing home <laughs> job. And I wanted to get rid of one of those to spend more time with my son. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got into freelance writing. I just Googled, can a nurse get paid to write? And like it popped up something called freelance writing. I didn't know what it was, Mm -hmm. but I researched it. I reached out to a couple of nursing um, publications and said, hey, I'm a nurse. I wonder if I can write some blogs for you. And one publication said, we'll give you a shot. We'll let you do a test piece. And it went like I did really well. And from there on, I just continued my, you know, my freelance writing side hustle until I built it up to the business that it is now. That is so dope. See, and I love that because it is that something goes off and I think a lot of people suppress it we all experience it where we're like this would be a good idea or I could Mm -hmm. help with this but we just don't know that it is right 
something that we could actually do. And so we just like brush it off. Like it's not nothing, but that that's amazing. And especially being able to identify that there is a need as far as the health literacy for the community that you're serving. And then did you keep doing that for the actual employer as well that you were like, that they Um, allow? So what I did was my boss, um, she was like, we need someone to come in and basically audit the other nurses charts. And so for those, those of you who don't know me, I'm an LPN. And so that role was technically for an RN, but she was like, you're killing it. Like you need to do this. And so they do, she created a role for me, a quality management, quality assurance role for me. And I did that role for about a year. And that's what I did. I audited the charts. I taught nurses another way they could say things to patients. And I love that role. Yeah. And we got our, our, our agency, our pie is what we called it. We got our uh, readmission rates. They drastically dropped. It's just as simple as instead of saying hypertension, you say high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. You go out and ask the patient, do you have diabetes? Well, no, I don't have diabetes. Well, do you have the sugar? Oh, yeah. I, they, the doctor said I have the sugar. So, you know, just simple things like that for our patients, things they didn't under, you know, they couldn't understand. And we would just meet them. I always say meet your patients where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, you drop down to where they are. Don't make them come up to where you are. So just meet them where they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so funny you mentioned that because I always say I think a really good job for nurses or business is to help patients figure out, you know, they go to this doctor's appointment, the doctor spews out all these big words and the patient's left and their family like, what, what does that mean for me? What is he saying? And then what do they do? Of mm-hmm. course they go to Google and they start Google searching and you know, end up in this rabbit hole. So um, that's so amazing <laughs> that you were able to really see that your patients had that need. And it's, and I love the spin, how you put on home health, because yeah, I think of it as the same, like, I don't want to be going to these people's houses, but to really think of it as, you're that extension of the hospital who can go out and really teach these patients and get down, like you said, to their level and really explain what it is and how they can take care of themselves at home to keep them out of the hospital. And that's just so, so priceless um, for, you know, for yeah. you to be and able to do I think a lot that. of nurses, we don't understand, like once you discharge them from the hospital or rehab center, nursing home, a lot of times there are things that we don't understand. Like when I was out there in the field in the dead of winter, I would go into a patient's house and it was freezing cold. And I would say, why is it so cold in here? And if you have to choose between getting Mm -hmm. your medication or paying your light bill, what are you going to do? You know? Um, So I think a lot of times I learned, I became more empathetic as a nurse Mm -hmm. when I was a home Mm -hmm. health nurse. Yeah. I can definitely it reminds me of kind of like a grassroots approach, like it's right. like grassroots, and and I and I I I, I agree with that. I didn't think about that honestly, but mm-hmm. I I did do home health for like a week, but once Oasis just made me dwindle my little <laughs> money down to eight nine dollars an hour, I said I can't do it. But it makes sense because it does give you a different viewpoint for the people that you are serving at the hospital, and right. I I told I never thought about it like that, so I I. Yeah, I agree. We all should have some type of experience with the clients that we are serving in the hospital and it will make us better nurses as well. Right. I didn't think about that. Sure. So tell me this, um, you are, you saw this need, you created, you created, you, you changed the brochures and then you started writing, right? Mm-hmm. And now you're writing for these, um, bl- uh, writing blogs for these, uh, popular, like, nurses nursing uh platform we we platform. write so um now i have a team they do most mm. of the writing i kind of just manage but we write for nursing platforms home health agencies doctors offices travel nurse agencies um health like publications we've even done things for like um those job boards that target nurses yeah um we write in small businesses as well, small entrepreneurs, nurses, yeah. fitness coaches, things like that. Anything that's nursing or health related, because, because all my writers are nurses as well. So um, we write for anything nursing or health related. We do that. But what does that, okay, tell me from a business side, now that we're talking, you know, because this is the nurse boss shift, so we got to get to the business. <laughs> so from a business perspective, though, like, I, I, and I can't speak for all nurses, but me, I have a love hate relationship with writing, right? Like (laughs) it's one of the reasons why I hesitated so much to go into the PhD program because I knew I had to write a dissertation at the end (laughs) and it's a struggle for me. And I'm not saying all nurses are like that, but I imagine that we're more science because like we're nurses and it's a science profession. Like, do you have to be a writer to do it? Like how? No, 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 no. You do not have to be a writer. And so I always tell nurses, like I have a course teaching nurses this and I always tell them, Forget everything you learned in nursing school. Forget everything you learned in English about writing your dissertation, writing these research papers. 
forget all that. You can like the way we write, we call it conversational style. So we're writing things for everyday people. You know, their readers are usually everyday people. Um, but some of the nursing platforms write for, of course, their readers are nurses. But you're just writing blog posts in a way that everybody can understand it. So um, you don't have to know. Well, some of our clients, like if you're writing for like a medical journal or, uh -huh. you know, you're writing specific things, maybe about, you know, CHF or you're writing about diabetes. You do have to bring in your medical nursing background. But for the most part, you're you're writing that you're taking it. Just think about when you're explaining a procedure to a patient. You break it down so that patient can understand. We do the same thing in writing. We just break it down so where it's easier to understand. So you don't have to go to school and be like a journalism major or English major. If you can understand basic English language and like noun verbs and how they work, then you can learn how to um, write blog posts. Blog posts are the it's the easiest entry for nurses to get into because it's simple. Um, but then we also do other things. We've written courses. Um, we've written you do a lot I do a lot of ghost writing for people like doctors who want to have like ebooks and things like that. So I do where well, my name doesn't go on it, but it's right, it's name, ghost so. writing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we just start <laughs> on we just start on the uh, I tell nurses that blogging is the easiest entry because it's so easy to learn. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you just learn how to write things so when people Google it, whatever you wrote pops up on like the first or second page of Google. Yeah. So, okay, so we don't have to worry about APA and MLA and all these different types, <laughs> right? With so you blogging. Have to know a little bit of that, just a little for bit. For blogging, for blogging Just too? a okay. tiny bit, just a tiny bit. Like you need to know how to use a, a, Ox, a, a Oxford comma or you need to okay. know where you need to put a space, but you don't have to know like how to cite, yeah. you know, things like that. You don't have to know how to do. Okay, yeah. okay. And so realistically, always, like, yeah. oh, oh, go ahead, Chris, sorry. Go ahead. I was always interested in, because I know, um, and blogging is still very popular, but people will say, I get paid for blogging. I get paid for blogging. Can you tell us a little bit? I know affiliates will so have a link in there and then they can click your link, but how else do you get paid from blogging? Okay. So there, I teach nurses, there are two ways you can get paid for blogging. You can blog for someone else's platform, which is what we do, like business to business. We write the blog post, they post it on their platform. Our okay. name is still attached. Or you can start your own blog, which what a lot of people, like influencers do, okay. where you're driving traffic to your blog and that's where you get like the affiliate links. Or um, let's say you do a review on a makeup line or you do a review on a stethoscope or a scrub set and the, the company says, we're going to pay you to write a blog post. We want you to host it on your site because you're getting the 10,000 you know, readers a month. So you, this, you were right the same way, whether you're writing for your platform or you're writing for someone else's platform. But blogging the way that you're talking, Crystal, like you have your own blog. You're getting traffic to your blog and brands to say you get 10,000 readers a month and you're a nurse and we want you to talk about our scrubs. And so you will write a blog post talking about these <clears throat> scrubs. With the um, you can also do things where you have banners where people can go in and they click on it. And depending on whatever your commission is for the company that you've worked out, you know, if they buy this stethoscope, you get 20 percent commission or, you know, something like that. OK, wow. You know, and I was trying to figure, Crystal, but you, for your site, because Crystal, I'm talking about your aesthetic uh, business. Do you mm -hmm. have a place you can blog? Usually they do allow you, yeah. like, I have never yeah. tapped into it. But well, I, I do. And right now I have, um, I have the company that hosts my website is blogging for me. Um, but I've often thought about throwing oh. a couple of, of them of my own out there um, just to see, you know, how it works. But yeah, definitely blogging and blogging drives your SEO. And so you show up. So like right, the new exactly. that I'm offering new weight loss, I, I told them I want to blog specifically about this so that I can rank on Google um, for that particular weight loss. Mm. Okay. Yes. So. Oh, this is very cool. interesting. I probably didn't. I mean, I knew about blogging, helping with SEO, but I kind of never thought about it probably because I don't want nothing to do with writing. <laughs> 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 Ever since that dissertation, I am like, but anyway, how much, how much realistically, if somebody was like, okay, I'm about to try this out, like what can they expect that they could possibly generate? And I know it depends. Okay. So you could give us a... So yeah, I'll give you. So if you're brand spanking new, you don't have any clients, you're just going out there and someone gives you a chance, you can get paid anywhere from 50 bucks to probably 300 bucks for a blog post up to a thousand dollars. As a nurse, 
you should not be making less than a hundred dollars because you have a clinical skill and they want mm. most of the time they want you because you have that LPN, RN, NP, CRNA behind your name. Mm-hmm. So you need to leverage that. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to write a piece on CHF, I'm going to write a piece on aesthetics, then you're getting my license because my name is on this. If it's not right, the board can come after me. So I need to have a little bit of money for risk. Mm-hmm. So I say, no less than a hundred dollars. Now, when you become someone like me, I've been blogging since 2017. Depending on what the topic is, like six hundred dollars all the way up to like a thousand, twelve hundred dollars, depending on how long the piece is. A blog? Yes. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you gotta kind of you gotta. Get yeah, your name no, up I know. But you've been in the game for yeah. six years, yeah. so. But still, that's still really good because in my mind and you can correct me if i'm wrong the longer you've been doing it the faster you become at p- yes. cranking them out yes. you don't want to yes. do it per hour because then you'll be right. no. you'll be you'll be um no, what do no, you no. call it I um, think punished not to do that. yes yeah. i teach nurses not to do not to write per hour you mm-hmm. write you charge per project mm. yeah. this is really good <laughs> and you can do it at home if you got kids like right. I, we're always crystal and i are always trying to find ways to get people to think outside the box we I, we know we love being nurses and i and that's mm-hmm. something that just comes at our core because you know that's how we grew up right but yeah. we don't have to work extra shifts like right how can mm-hmm. we bring in more money without having to sacrifice our physical right. mental and emotional health in the process right that's what i'm always thinking about for nurses this would be a really good way to do that so my next question for you is going to be how in the heck do we find the people to pay us like where where do we go okay so i mean you can always come right for me but if you want to go out on your own (laughs) period you can um first thing you need to do is figure out what niche you want to write in do you want to write about nurses and i was a lot of nurses said well what do i start i said well what do you know as a nurse what's your nursing experience what's your Mm -hmm. clinical background if you lnd nurse are you women's health nurse are you an oncology Mm -hmm. nurse so figure out what you know more than the average person most nurses know more than the average person mm-hmm. about medical health and nursing related stuff. Mm-hmm. Then the next thing that you need to do, once you figure out what your niche is going to be, um, get to searching for people in that niche. So go to LinkedIn, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, start Googling. So let's say for an example, you're an oncology nurse and you say, I know all this stuff about oncology. I think I want to write about oncology. So what I would tell that nurse to do is, is there an oncology center near you? You know, is there mm-hmm. most major cities have an oncology center? Is there an mm-hmm. oncology center near you? Is there an oncologist, you know, private practice as an oncologist that's near you? Go on LinkedIn, type in the word oncologist Atlanta, Georgia, or mm-hmm. wherever you live at. Mm-hmm. And you reach out to that person and say, you know, hey Dr. Jones, my name is Portia. I'm an oncology nurse. I've been a nurse for the past three years. I'm also a writer. Um, have you ever thought about having a nurse to write for your blog mm-hmm. or to write blogs for you? And then if you don't want to do blogs, maybe you want to do patient education. You know, have you ever, has your patients told you they don't understand the patient education? Have you ever thought about having a nurse to break that down? Mm -hmm. Usually what they're going to say is, I want to see samples of what you do. So nurses say, well, I'm new. I don't have any samples. So what I tell them to do is open up a Google Doc and write three 700 word pieces that are related to your niche. So that when people ask for an example, whether you have clients or not, you can send them the link to that Google Doc mm-hmm. and show them what you can do. Mm-hmm. And from there, you negotiate what your rate would be, how often you will work with them. And once you get that first client, then get a review or a testimonial, and then you can reach out to the next client. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a simple process. It's not as hard as people try to make it seem. Yeah. Um, there's so many, like I always, the nurses that I work with, I give them ways to think like outside the box. Mm-hmm. Um. I have one nurse who her son has, she has an autistic son. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, go, I said, well, every school system by federal law, they're supposed to provide resources to these families, you know, these kids Mm -hmm. that have special needs, go to the school board, ask them, what are you doing for the parents to help them, you know, take care of their kids at home? I'm a nurse. I also have a son who's autistic. Would you be willing for me to start a blog on the school website? And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's dedicated to this. And she was able to do that. Oh, and I know somebody who I need to see. And that's the thing. I think one, I know for me, especially, and Crystal, you can speak to this if you've you've experienced this as an entrepreneur. But one of the things for me is that thinking outside Mm -hmm. beyond just like we are so 
boxed in. And I feel like, Portia, the more educated I became, the narrower my box got. And I could not wow. see out of it to save my life, right? And so now, once I started making the non-traditional steps and like stepping, just doing things that normally I wouldn't do is when my eyes began to open up more because I couldn't see. And so right. just that, what you said, just rolls off your tongue so easily. A lot of people don't realize in business, you have to go out. Like right. we kind of think if we build it, they will come. And that's really not true. So you have to be creative in thinking, okay, how do I go and find these people? But mm -hmm. I think that's the advantage of having someone who is in it as well, like you are, right. who can kind of see it from your vision, your vantage point and say like, okay, go to the school districts or this and that. Cause, cause we wouldn't think about it. What about you, Chris? I think it's easier now that we've been doing business for a couple of years to think outside of the box. But before, yeah, it was definitely, you know, I'm going to get hired in the, this department, work for this hospital, and then that's all my nursing career is going to be. And now that my mind's been blown at all the amazing things people are doing, and I feel mm -hmm. that I go back now and I'm telling everyone, like, you can have a business, you can do this. And um, I've said this before, my friends all think that I should have went to nursing school because now I could be doing what you're doing. And I'm like, that didn't come from nursing school. That came from me thinking outside <laughs> of the box. And everybody has their <laughs> one thing that they know and that they're passionate about or that they know more than the other person. So start a blog about that. Start a business about that. It doesn't have to be, you know, just because we're science scientists or nurses that we're the only ones who can blog. Like the mom with five kids, how do you handle that? Like, tell me, please let me know right. how the organized yeah. mom, the mom who, who has their schedule on point. Those are all amazing things that people can make a business or a blog about, like you said, and get paid for something that comes so easily to them. Okay. Yeah. So this, this has been like really eye opening. I love mm -hmm. this by the way. So tell me when, if people are, listening right well they are they're listening and they're like oh my god mm -hmm. this is dope like how what what would you suggest or what would you tell them aside of like you saying like figure it out how do they work with you to to make this happen which by the way crystal and i are 100 percent supporters of coaches because yes. that coaches will get you there a lot faster it's the cheat code go ahead yeah. <laughs> well, you can work with me i'm on instagram at the right nurse w-r-i-t-e the right nurse in my bio i have the links for nurses who want to um start their freelance writing business we also have a workshop where I teach nurses because a lot of nurses, they were like, OK, I understand how to start my business, but now I need help with writing. So I created a workshop called Bankable Blogs where I teach nurses how to write, how they can rank on Google. And we it's a two hour workshop and I it's a live workshop. We go step by step how to we dissect a blog post and I tell you why I did why it. I wrote it that way. Why is ranking? And I teach you how to write and give you a lot of tools from that as well. Um, and then another thing, if you're LPN and a lot of LPN say, well, I can't do this. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. Yep. I created a membership for LPNs called Learn Pivot. LPNs and LVNs called Learn Pivot Navigate, where I basically teach you everything I've done because my nursing career, like I never was like stuck at the bedside. Like I knew I wasn't going to be stuck at the bedside, even though I'm an LPN. I've been in management, and the when I left my nursing job, I was training all the corporate infection control nurses when I left. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that is where it's called Learn, Pivot, Navigate. It's Learn, Pivot, Navigate on Instagram as well. Learn, um, is that paper? P-A-P-E-R? Learn, Pivot, Navigate. Oh, Pivot. Learn, okay. Pivot, Navigate. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I um, like and that. then another thing I think is important is that you, Dr. Jones, you probably can relate to this, is when you, when you get in business, like, I feel like when I became an entrepreneur, I had like so many business ideas. Like, I want to do this. I want to do mm -hmm. that. But when what I learned as a writer, because a lot of times people do get tired of writing. I got mm -hmm. burned out last mm -hmm. year really bad. So I just stopped writing and let my team write for me. And I was like, I want to do something else. So I start doing speaking engagements. I start teaching physicians and um, nurse practitioners associations how to do content that is um, yes. diverse and inclusive. And then I started a whole other business called the Healthcare Influencer Network because what happened was one of my clients said, we need influencers. Can you help us? And I said, I sure can. And <laughs> we started a Healthcare Influencer Network and we just pair nurses and other healthcare professionals with brands and they get paid. Like they post on social media and they get paid. So that's Girl. like- a <laughs> Yeah, that is dope as I don't know what. Yeah. And you are you a millennial? I'm sorry. Are you a millennial? Yes, I am. See the millennial, y'all just 
Yeah, millennials. Like I'm yeah. not really like I'm a couple years. Yeah, I'm partners of Gen Z. Yeah, yeah. I'm, business partners of Gen Z or so. Uh, yeah, because see so, that yeah. that that not allowing your. You know, I get a lot of um, comments and messages. I've talked to you about this from LVNs and LPNs. Like, can I? Can mm-hmm. I? Can I? And I really feel like, and this is just business as a whole. You can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And I I don't want to be, I'm not the gatekeeper, right? But I want everybody to know, yes, my market is RNs and MPs because of what I am offering. But from a person to person, what I want people to know, you could do whatever. I don't care, LPN, LVN, RN, CNA, whatever. You just have to make sure you have the right people in position. Right. That's it. So like, yep. and I and I was so glad to bring you on here to kind of showcase that, but stop asking for permission. This goes for, honestly, right. RNs too, because they do it too, but LPNs, mm-hmm. LVNs, CNAs, wherever you are on the spectrum in this healthcare nursing space, you can do whatever you want to do. You just got to decide, find a hole and fill it, find right. a problem and solve it, find a right. pain point and resolve their pain. That is what essentially what you're doing. And that's dope because I I need to talk to you about that influencer. Uh, what is it? Come on. We, I, 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 I have never worked with any we brands. Are paying, never. We are paying our, and we pay our influencers top dollar. What makes Sarah, and my, my business partner, Sarah, what makes us so, sets us aside from like the other influencer agencies, is like, we don't try to say, we're going to pay you this much. Like you are a doctor, you are a nurse practitioner, you are a nurse. Most of the time you're still working a 12 hour shift. And then we want you to create this dynamic content. And we let the brands know you have to pay these people. Like you can't offer them a, a free pair of scrubs. Right. Like, we're not doing it anymore. <laughs> right. You need to pay them money because right. they are bringing traffic to you. Yeah. And it's been fun. It's been fun. We've worked with some major brands. Um, we've been able to work with influencers who have big followings, but because a lot of brands don't have diversity, they weren't able to get brand deals and we were able to get them their first brand deals and pay them what they deserve. Ooh, so it's been fun. Great. You know, it was just a branch off of what I was already doing. Mm-hmm. And I saw the door and I was like, okay, we're just going to bust through this door. Let's just knock it down and go. I love yeah. that. Chris, you got to <laughs> get That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, that's it. amazing yeah that really is i want yeah, yeah, to I... Ask, uh, oh go ahead go ahead chris no go ahead. i just wanted to ask because i know listeners are thinking what is we talked about um getting paid but what is okay i'm starting out i'm writing a couple of blogs of course it takes a little while to get your name out there but what would you say is a time period before someone will really start making you know at least a little bit of money to know that they're on the right track um, and getting okay. to where they need to be. So I think it's subjective to the person. It depends on what your goals were. My goal was I did not want to work another job. I wanted mm-hmm. to just work my full-time job and be at home with my son. I was able to do that in six months. I was able to let my other nursing job go. So okay. what I was making as a writer is supplement the income. Okay. Um, Technically, okay. I could have left in 2019, at the end of 2019, and ran my business full-time. But because... I still had a little mindset issue with being a mm-hmm. nurse and I want to stay and I want to mm-hmm. help through the pandemic. Yeah. I didn't leave. I was making more money in 2020 doing my business than I was as a nurse, mm-hmm. but I was yeah. still working as a nurse. And to the point where I just got so burnt out, I couldn't do it anymore. And that's yeah. when I said, okay, you have to choose. Either you're going to still work full time and run this business full time, mm-hmm. or you're going to run this business full time so that you can help other nurses leave the bedside. And that's mm-hmm. when I decided I was just going to leave. So uh, it took me six months to be able to say, okay, I made this much, this is how much money I need to make to be able to leave this job. And that's what I made. And then it took me another, about another year to supplement my full-time nursing job to like make more money in my full-time nursing job. Um, And so I told nurses, whatever your goals are, I don't know, maybe your goal is you just want to make part-time money. Some Mm -hmm. nurses just want to make a little extra cash. They don't want to do this Mm full-time. When you do this full-time, um, you are going to have to get out there and find clients. Clients are not going to come to you. So you're going to be finding clients. You're going to be researching and learning how to write. You're going to be your, you have to be your own boss. You have to make mm-hmm. sure you're pushing yourself because people, well, eventually people will start coming to you once your name gets out there, but mm-hmm. you're going to have to actually dedicate the time to get right. out there and say, okay, I'm going to give myself a year and then I'm going to have a full-time income doing this. Right. Wow. 
So let me ask you this, and um, we I know we're we're starting to wrap up, but I I do have to ask this. So you and I want to make sure we're highlighting. It's not just LPNs and LBNs. You mm-hmm. also work with RNs, nurse practitioners, nurses right. along the spectrum. Now I want to ask CNAs also, or is it just yes? Any, okay, anybody that's clinical on the nursing that's side. Right. Um, I have had a few physicians that came in that wanted to learn, um, but usually. They don't want to, after they see what it is, they, they might get their nurses to write the blog post for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I have had um, entrepreneurs like you guys who mm-hmm. didn't want to learn. They sent like maybe their virtual assistant in to mm-hmm. learn for mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. So mm-hmm. um, anyone can learn how to, to write. And I tell nurses and people all the time, if you go and read any top blog, healthcare blog, most of the time, the people who wrote that blog, they have no nursing or healthcare background. It's someone who went to school for like journalism mm-hmm. or English or something like that. So they have no background, nursing background. They wrote the piece and then maybe a nurse or a physician reviewed it to make sure it was med- medically correct. Mm-hmm. So if they can do it, why can't you? Right, right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I love that. And just think six months, potentially six months, even if, so my thing is, and the approach that I always take is like, a slow transition. So it's not, mm-hmm. I don't be like, quit your job, burn all the bones. No, yeah. that's oh, not no. what I did. No. So my thing is though, if you could just not have to pick up overtime, that's, that's a huge right. feat, right. right? And you can be at home and, you know, spending more time with your kids and then gradually be able to go to per DM or part time, then right. per DM. And then, you know, slowly just kind of distance yourself if that's what you want to do from the bedside. I think this is something that definitely can lead to that if they are committed and dedicated so you have the program that where they can actually come and work with you or for you Mm -hmm. and write for you but then you also have the program where you will you can teach them how to write on their own is that right right so both of the both of the programs so the paid and published courses it teaches you how to start your freelance writing business we talk about how you can find clients how to pick your niche how to pitch to clients how to set up your nurse writer website and from there you can go and Fly your wings and go away. I always encourage nurses to do that. But if you figure out, what if you go through that program and you say, well, I don't really think I really know how to really write a good blog post, then you can take the Bankable Blogs workshop. Or if you already have a freelance writing business, or if you just don't want to start a business and you have a blog and you just want to know how to write a blog, you can take the Bankable Blogs workshop or send your VA or someone on your team to do it for you. Um, And both of those programs are available. And then the nurses who go through um, either program they say hey do you have room for a writer yeah i always got room for writers um mm-hmm. just send me an email and if we have some room for you we can fit you in somewhere um we'll be honest usually it takes a nurse who's just brand new who doesn't write you know who hasn't really written anything it takes a little bit it takes mm-hmm. maybe three months for me to be like okay do you understand why you need to write it this way but i'm yeah. patient mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a good teacher mm-hmm. um and I'm, I'm excited for you to go out. A lot of the nurses who started with me, they've gone out and started their own businesses. One of the nurses, has, she writes full time for a really big nursing brand. So I'm not one, like you said, I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm not one of those. Mm-hmm. Like, I want you to go out and do your thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I just like to let other nurses know what's available to them. Because mm-hmm. when I started freelance writing, there were other nurses who were doing it and they weren't so kind to help me mm-hmm. i kind of had to figure it out myself mm-hmm. yeah so let me ask you um the and so that that's the two so we already talked about the two and then the last one is your membership that's the lpn i just want to make sure yeah, that we're letting LPN. them know yeah. is that specifically that's for yes yeah, okay Sorry, R- i love that MP- no, for it's needed because though. I want yes. them to feel comfortable mm-hmm. to express themselves to vent. And then there are some things that we go through that if you've never been an LPN or LBN, you might not understand as an RN. Mm-hmm. You know, or an mm-hmm. RN. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I love that. I love because I I always feel bad because we're all nurses, but I know that I am targeting RNs and NPs, right. and I'm like they need that. They need a community as well. They're welcome to come into my community, but when we're talking nursing, it just feels like it's leaving something out and there and that platform definitely could add a lot of value um to to them as well um okay this is a like kind of something you said just made me think about this last was two questions and then that's it but this one is about the division between lpns lvns and (laughs) rns can we talk about that i mean because i i would like your perspective and just like I will tell you from me, I f- I really feel like it's a divide and conquer. I don't like it at all. Um, mm-hmm. I think we all need to be, fo- if, for us to be separate the way we are, like now, you know, got the CNAs and the RNs and then the LPNs and the RNs and then like, 
I feel like it's doing such a disservice to the nursing yeah. profession as a collective. And tell me what your thoughts are on that. And then Chris, yeah, then you can mm-hmm. tell me what I, your thoughts about it. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, I don't think I really, I did have one instance when I was a home health nurse, I had a case manager who was an RN um, who never done home health before. And I, she would do things I would correct her on. And she had an issue with me just being an LPN trying to correct her. And even mm-hmm. when I got that position, she had a, she made a big mess out of it. But I feel like I tell LPNs all the time, if you know what you know, and you know that you know what you know, and you're confident and you know, you can take care of your patients, then it's going to show mm-hmm. like every job that I've ever had. I always ended up in a management or an administrative position uh, because I put myself out there. You know, when I got the staff development job, I was already creating programs. Like when I came to that job, they didn't even have a report sheet. Like the nurses would call the hospital. They didn't even know what to ask the nurses at the hospital to get a good report. And I was like, okay, let me create something. And I created it. Mm -hmm. And I will always do things like that. And so I went to my boss and I said, hey, I'm already teaching everybody anything anyway. I think I need this position. This needs to be a formal position for me. And she's like, you know what? You're right. It's yours. I was already doing that anyway, but I've always been that type. I've always taken initiative. I went for what I wanted. Um, and I never let anyone say that because you have three letters behind your name instead of two. You can't do this. Well, no, I've, I've been doing this. So you have to give me another reason why I can't do it. Mm-hmm. So, um, I feel like there is some division, but most of the RNs that I work with, um, they opened me because I love to learn. They knew that I knew what I was talking about. I always would make sure that, you know, and the doctors, the physicians too, the physicians, um, the providers, the nurse practitioners, they would come in and ask for me because they knew that I knew what I was doing. So I feel like it's a confidence thing. Mm-hmm. It's you stepping into what you know. You are a nurse. You went to school. You took an NCLEX. Um, if you, if you have additional certifications and all that stuff, you know what you know, you have to be confident in proving that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of let stuff like that just like slide off my back. It didn't bother me because I knew I was here to take care of the patients. Mm-hmm. I didn't really, I'm not here to make friends with you. If we're friends, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But if we're not, I still get to go home to my family. So mm-hmm. I, I don't care. Yeah. And, and I, and yeah. I like when people kind of try to avoid, like not add, add, gasoline yeah. to that fire like you know mm-hmm. just we all need each other I'm sorry we do right go ahead Chris yeah <laughs> I was gonna say I we definitely all need each other and the confidence thing too I would I want and hope that LPNs are are more confident like you said and their title their position they know what they know and they're definitely needed and I do feel like it's a divide and conquer um down to the CN or not down, but from the CNA level, you know, up even with, okay, are you a bachelor prepared RN? Or, and, and now you're against the master's mm-hmm. prepared and it's the MPs and mm-hmm. it's just so forth and so on. And I, we talk about this all the time for, and that's for them to have us fighting against each other and to stay in, in nursing or traditional nursing bedside. <laughs> We're just pitted mm-hmm. against each other and there's no need for that. Yeah. Um, everyone is needed, especially yeah. for, you know, the best unit that I worked on, Luckily was my first nursing job and we respected from the CNA. I needed her just as much as I needed the doctor, everyone in between my LVNs, you know, we had 10 patients to one nurse, but my LVN was the one doing everything. I was just charting and pushing, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever drugs. So I definitely have, um, garnered a real respect for LPN CNA. So I think that, you know, there are bullies um, in every field. Nurses get bullied, nurses bully LPNs, mm-hmm. but I hope that LPNs just have, you know, that confidence that they are nurses as well and not listen to any of that other noise that goes on that they're any less than. Mm, yeah. Right. For sure, for sure. And on that note, whether they are LVN, LPN, or RN, or MP, give us three things that has changed your, shifted your nurse boss mindset that has helped you elevate um, anything that you would have them do. We just want three. So it's like their homework, if you will. Um, There's a book called Built to Sell. And I love that book. And it changed my life when it comes to business. Because when I when I first became an entrepreneur, I was just thinking, I was just really just <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants. Pretty much. But built <laughs> All of us. <laughs> like, you know, most of the people who are the millionaires, the billionaires, they build their businesses up and they sell them. And it mm. teaches you how to build your business up from like the ground up into the point to where you want to sell it. So mm-hmm. like my, both of my businesses now, and I told Sarah, I was like, we're, we're selling this business, you know, mm-hmm. eventually because that's mm-hmm. my goal. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know, that will change my um, life in a coach. 
mm-hmm. a coach. Um, my business coach is dynamic. They took me from not making any money to well over six figures, mm-hmm. working with them less than a year. And I always tell people, when you get a coach, I always, it needs to be someone who you aspire to be. Mm-hmm. And my coach had a team of people. So they taught me everything from like how to invoice, how to do sales calls with my, with my clients, how to fire clients. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, you know, I had an issue with firing clients. And a lot of times when you're dealing with a client who is always just like taking up so much of your time, you're not, you don't have space for what you need. So yeah. when I start like saying no to clients, not taking on clients, I said no. And then like the floodgates just open. Um, mm-hmm. so also having a coach. And then I think that a good surrounding yourself with people who support you, whether they understand what it is that you do or not. All of my friends are nurses who are entrepreneurs. So they kind of understand the struggle. They understand what it is that I do. And I think, you know, they say you surround you, the, what they say, the five people that you surround yourself with is what you're going to become. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is so true. Um, when I surrounded myself with other women, for me, I wanted to surround myself with black women who were doing what I wanted to do, aspire to be, I wanted to aspire to be like them. Mm-hmm. It just changed my world. Like I didn't know that there was so much out there in the world mm-hmm. that I can get that I deserve it I can go and get it and that could hold me back from it and so for me those are the three things that book yeah. built to sell getting a coach who mm-hmm. understands your industry understands what it is that you're trying to do who's proven success that they know how to get mm-hmm. you there and then just surrounding yourself with a good support team who who's been there who understands what you know where it is that you're trying to go who can give you you can call them up and I can call my friends and say, hey, girl, I got this idea. What do you think about this? Or mm-hmm. what should I charge for this? And they mm-hmm. help me with that. Yeah, the network. Okay. I think that that's okay. really a big one for nurses because, you know, we all, and I always, I always use this analogy, sitting at that nurse's station or sitting in that break room and we talk about the same old stuff, how miserable we are, how horrible administration is, how they gave us too many, you know, the same old, same old. Like we got to get, we got to break up that monotony and like start surrounding ourselves with people who are positive, who are doing the things that Mm -hmm. we want to do, who, like you said, you aspire to be. That is so important and who can inspire you to do more and want more. Um, Were you going to say something, Chris? Nope. I loved it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, um, yeah, this has been amazing, Portia. Again, you guys, you can reach her. She is the right nurse. W-R, like, you know, right with a pen. (laughs) W-R-I-T-E nurse um, on all platforms. Is that right? Yep, all on, platforms. On all platforms, you guys go check her out. And I Please. listen, if you guys are trying to figure out in 2023 something you can do that's not going to require you to have to go back to school or, you know, things like that to make more money, this sounds like it cuz really you're feeding off of your own experiences, which wow. we who knows our own experiences better um than us. So thank you so much, yeah. Portia. Listen, you guys, you as always, we are here to provide value for you so that you can get to your next level and make that nurse bra shift. Until next time, you guys, make sure you tag a friend, subscribe, share, uh, (laughs) and all that good stuff. Comment. Bye. Yeah, comment below. (laughs) All right, you guys, bye. (laughs)